welcome to the next week of the course. In today's lecture, we will continue focusing on understanding the behavior of older victims of abuse. We will go through coping strategies that are usually used by victims and learn about the challenges of the help-seeking process. The question, why do older women stay in abusive relationships, will be answered. And in the final section of today's video, we will introduce screening tools and techniques to identify the abuse. We will also cover the special needs of victims with dementia and memory disorders. Numerous obstacles prevent older women from seeking help, and many of them are related to societal beliefs and attitudes. For example, older women might think due to misconceptions rooted in ageism and sexism that they are supposed to be able to cope with violence. What is more, they might now be aware of their existing domestic violence services or think that they are suitable only for younger women since most of the societal discussion of violence is focused on younger victims. As a result, older women often stay in abusive relationships. The reasons for this can be divided into the following categories. First one is cohort effects and traditional values. Today's older women belong to a group of people who were born and raised during a specific time when independence and education of women were not encouraged. This generation's upbringing often reinforced traditional gender roles and values, including loyalty to the husband and family, viewing marriage as a permanent bond and considering divorce unacceptable. As a result, domestic violence was seen as an internal family matter and seeking help was disapproved of. What is more, when today's older women were young, domestic violence services did not exist as such. Only gradually respective changes in public opinion, as well as in laws and policies regarding women's rights, reduced tolerance of domestic violence and provided for specialized services for victims of violence. Next category of barriers to seeking help is aging effects and health issues. Aging brings about challenges such as health issues, fear of loneliness and stress caused by the death of family members and friends. Mobility problems might make it more difficult for older women to access domestic violence services. Other possible barriers to seeking help are related to financial difficulties. Also, younger women also face financial barriers which might keep them in an abusive relationship. These barriers are even greater for older women. Many of them were not employed when they were younger and later in their lives. It could be difficult or impossible for them to find jobs due to a lack of experience and ages. Therefore, Today, older women's pensions might be very small and they might not have any savings. Also, they might not be eligible for housing or other financial support. Next category relates to the concepts of stigma and shame. Older women are particularly likely to feel ashamed of being abused especially if they have endured violence for a long time. Those who started a new relationship later in their life may be embarrassed to admit that it might have been a mistake. Besides, older women may be afraid that people or professionals will not believe them if they report violence. The last category of barriers to seeking help relates to different fears. Older women might be afraid of being alone. After years of decades of living with someone, they might fear the unknown and be unwilling to start over. 
They might also think that leaving an abuser will result in losing their children, grandchildren and or pets. Therefore, a better understanding on the challenges that older people face may give valuable insight into how to assist them in case they remain in abusive relationships for a long time. Since abuse can take many different forms, some of them less obvious than others, it is important to know the methods of identifying them. Screening for elder abuse is a process of obtaining information about violence experiences in family or other relationship from older vulnerable persons who do not exhibit obvious signs of abuse, such as physical injuries, to identify victims of violence. The rationale for screening is that early identification may prevent future further violence and reduce the risk of negative health consequences as a result of violence. In the case of older people, screening is particularly important since elder abuse might have grave health consequences and its identification rates are rather low. Screening should be done using standardized tools. What is more, screening should be just the first step in elder abuse prevention and identification and should be followed by an appropriate multidimensional response. Several risk assessment tools that can be used to screen individuals for violence have been developed based on studies and clinical experience. Some of the tools are sets of questions which either can be asked by a professional or completed by an older person, self-disclosure tools. Other risk assessment tools are based on recognizing signs of different types of violence. The main goal of all of these tools is to raise suspicion that an older person might be abused. They only suggest that violence might be taking place. And if suspicion is raised, an in-depth interview with a possible victim should be conducted. To use screening instruments correctly, healthcare professionals should receive the appropriate training in applying them as well as training in elder abuse, risk assessment, safety planning, multi-agency cooperation, specific needs of older women, etc. They should also understand how to behave with older people like they should be respectful and sensitive. What is more, healthcare professionals must know the existing protocols, procedures for reporting and addressing violence, those that exist in their workplace, as well as local, regional ones, and understand the roles played by different professionals in preventing and ending elder abuse. Therefore, a system for support and consultations between professionals should be established. Risk of elder abuse and mistreatment instrument, REAMI, is a validated screening instrument which can be used by professionals who know an older person, their family and social environment. The REAMI takes into account both signs of elder abuse, such as suspicious bruises and risk factors for abuse such as relationship between an older person and a possible perpetrator, as well as the physical and social environments of older people. The Riami is a short but thorough tool, which makes it possible to accurately assess the situation under in time constraints. The tool can be used by informal and formal carers, healthcare and social service workers. The unique feature of the REAMI is that it takes into account different types of possible perpetrators who are referred to as key figures. A key figure is close to older people 
and usually has some sort of bond with them. This could be an older person's partner, one of their children, a neighbor or a professional caregiver. The Riyami questionnaire is filled by professionals who are asked to what extent they feel the proposed 22 statements apply to their client. The response options range from completely disagree to completely agree. The 22 statements were developed based on the literature, results of previous studies and three rounds of consultation with academics, healthcare professionals and professionals who deal with elder abuse daily. You can find Riyami template attached to this week's course's material. As we have previously mentioned, older people are often reluctant to report cases of abuse due to various factors, such as shame, guilt or dependence on the abuser. Those who report violence usually do so in case of physical or sexual abuse. This demonstrates that older people tend to report only severe cases of violence while choosing to hide seemingly milder cases of abuse. Therefore, when a professional suspects abuse, it is important that they carefully ask the right questions. Communication with older patients should be not only effective in terms of exchange of information, but most importantly, respectful. If there is a comfortable atmosphere with mutual trust and respect, the older person will open up and will be ready for further cooperation. There are special rules that could be followed to achieve that. First of all, make sure to use proper, a preferred way of addressing a person. Approach the conversation in formal language or ask the patient about their preferred forms of addressing, for example, Mr., Mrs., Miss, or the person's first name. Do not forget to introduce yourself and your role in the situation. Do it clearly and make sure not to speak too quickly. Demonstrate that there is no rush you are not busy and the older person can take their time to understand what is being asked or said. If the older person feels being hurried or interrupted, they might make a conclusion that they are not being heard or understood. Use active listening skills such as maintaining eye contact, using frequent brief responses such as OK, I see and mm hmm Make sure to demonstrate empathy by responding to patients' emotions using phrases such as that sounds difficult or I'm sorry you're facing this situation. I will help you to get through this. It is usually difficult for patients to remember everything discussed during the appointment, especially in the case with elderly written notes that summarize major points of the discussion can be very helpful. However, always take into account the victim's safety. Avoid providing any notes or materials that can be found by the perpetrator and used against the older person. If throughout the conversation you refer to medical or legal terminology, make sure that older person is familiar with that and fully understands the meaning. Feel free to address the question if everything is clear many times throughout the conversation. Older persons often have sensory impairments such as bad eyesight or hearing, which can be a barrier to communication. Ask the patient if they would like you to take into account any of their special needs. Be careful about the language and the word you use. 
some of the words may have different meanings to the older generation than to a younger one. Words may also have different connotations based on cultural or ethnic background. For example, to some people, the word violence can refer to extreme physical brutality. Make sure that the older person understands what you mean by using simple common language and always ask if any additional clarification is needed. It is best to start the conversation and approach the topic through a general question about older person's well-being. For example, how are things at home? Or how do you feel about the place where you live in? This gives the older person the chance to open up about things that worry or upset them. A professional needs to listen to not just what is being said, but also what is not being said. An older person who is afraid of their caregiver may give evasive answers that do not show the full picture. Another red flag is if a caregiver or a family member is always present when you meet or contact with the older person. Always try to interview the older person alone, if possible. After the general question, you can proceed with more narrow questions. If you suspect that physical or sexual abuse is taking place, try to approach the topic by the following questions. Are you afraid of anyone at home? Have you been struck, slapped or kicked? Has someone touched you without your permission? Have you been tied down or locked in a room? Have you been forced to do something you do not want to? To identify if emotional abuse is taking place, please try to use the following questions in the interview with the elderly. Does someone scold or threaten you? Does someone call your names or humiliate you? Do you feel alone or excluded? Have you ever received the silent treatment that would make you feel guilty for doing something wrong? What happens when you and your caregiver disagree? If you suspect neglect, try to use a question such as Do you lack any aids? For example, eyeglasses, hearing aids, or false teeth, dentures. Have you been left alone for a long time? Do you get enough food and drinks? Are you always given water when you ask for it? Has someone refused to take you to the bathroom when you asked? If you need assistance, how do you usually ask for it? Do you always get help when you need it? To identify financial abuse, try to address the following questions. Does your caregiver depend on you financially? Has someone taken anything that is yours without asking? Has money been stolen from you? Has anyone made you sign documents that you did not understand or did not want to sign? If the older person has told about the abusive situation or event, follow up with more narrow questions to get the full picture. Try to get as much information as possible. What in particular has happened? When did it take place? How many times? Try to learn who is a perpetrator. Ask whether the older person has a person whom they trust and can contact if the abusive situation reoccurs. Another important question to raise is how the older person sees the situation. Do they want to change and help? And if yes, what kind of help? What would make them feel safer in the current situation?
Weakness with cognitive impairments, like dementia, deserve special attention and assistance. Dementia refers to several conditions which develop as a result of degenerative changes in the brain and primarily affect older people. For instance, Alzheimer's disease is a most common form of dementia. Dementia can be characterized by the loss of cognitive, social and behavioral functions, which impacts person's mood and personality, as well as their ability to speak, understand and think rationally, communicate, remember and perform basic self-care activities such as dressing, eating and bathing. Several studies have reported higher rates of physical abuse of people with dementia than those without this disorder. For instance, older persons with Alzheimer's disease are 4.8 times more likely to experience violence than those who do not have it. Violence against older persons with dementia is believed to be underreported probably because victims are less likely to articulate their feelings and experiences. It is often hard for them to remember or understand what has happened to them. What is more, people with dementia are less likely to seek help and have the mental or physical capacity to go out of abusive relationships. Diagnosed dementia does not automatically increase chances for an older person to be abused by the caregiver. However, according to research, there are additional risk factors that might lead to abusive behavior. They include, for example, stage of dementia as communication with an older person is more complicated as dementia progresses. Another factor is the aggressive behavior of the older person, which can be particularly hard for some of the caregivers to handle. Disruptive and aggressive behavior of people with dementia can be a major cause of stress for carers, family members, paid carers, or healthcare service providers, which might lead them to retaliate with violence and result in drinking problems. Carers who may be old and frail themselves can also be victims of assault by care recipients with dementia. Also, depression, anxiety, alcohol abuse, social isolation and poor relationship with victims before the occurrence of dementia are associated with a higher risk of violence and neglect by carers. In long-term care facilities, low levels of job satisfaction and high burnout rates among workers may lead to an increased risk of violence and neglect. Elder abuse of people with dementia is known to be especially hard to identify. This might be due to similar psychological symptoms of both dementia and abuse. For example, anxiety and withdrawal. In case you suspect that violence is taking place, it is crucial to choose the right approach while discussing the abuse with older people with dementia. Direct, clear and non-threatening language is the most effective way to comfort the person and establish a trusting relationship. Try to arrange a face-to-face -face meeting without the presence of care. Make sure to speak slowly and ask only one and short question at a time. Try to ask who, what, when and where questions, but not why. It is also important to use appropriate terminology and language that could be understood by the elderly. While asking the questions, always pay attention to the person's body language and voice intonation. 
In cases where direct questioning of the older person with dementia is impossible, health or social care practitioner can pay attention to communication between the older person and caregiver. Talking to the carer and other family members might also be beneficial. It is better to take a sensitive, empathetic and non-judgmental approach while discussing the situation with the carer. There is a risk to escalate the conflict and carer might try to isolate the victim to hide evidence of abuse. Certain interview techniques help to establish a better connection with the suspected perpetrator. For example, try to ask about the demands of the older person first and then move on asking about the person's feelings and frustrations they may have concerning their caring role. After that, you can proceed with direct questions about possible abusive situations. Caregivers of older people with dementia need to receive adequate information and education about the clinical course of dementia and the recipient's needs to care effectively and avoid further abusive situations. Response to a elder abuse for persons with dementia is complex due to issues with decision-making, as dementia can impair a person's decision-making capacity. It might be challenging for a healthcare professional to determine whether it is appropriate to take any action on behalf of the older person. It can be especially hard when intervention is needed but the older person does not seem to agree. Healthcare professionals are bounded by professional ethics and have to respect the person's autonomy. But on the other hand, they are also obligated to protect vulnerable older people from abuse and neglect. What is more, it might be difficult to estimate the older person's cognitive capacity, as it might change from one area of their life to others. For example, an older person with dementia may make a conscious decision in some domains of their life, but not in others. Work with the elderly with cognitive limitations requires special skills and knowledge from social and health professionals. Such requirements often end up being barriers to multi-agency cooperation. For example, there might be differences among professionals in agencies specializing in elder abuse and those who specialize in dementia care. Thus, professionals from different organizations need to receive appropriate training on how to treat patients with special needs. In the next video, you will learn how to provide adequate help to the older victims of violence. So far, we have covered only how to identify the abuse by screening tools and interview questions. I hope you have found it useful.